Velkommen, bienvenue, welcome. Fremde, étranger, stranger. Gluklik, je sais, je suis enchanté. Happy to see you, bleib a rest a stay. Willkommen, bienvenue, welcome. I'm cabaret, oh cabaret, to cabaret. Mein Damen und Herren. Mein Damen und Herren. Mesdames et messieurs, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to BMP's Got Talent. Yes, you heard that right. BMP's Got Talent. What kind of talent, you ask? Amazing talent. Talent of every degree. And we know that because we have to take the temperature before allowing them to perform. Yes, BMP's Got Talent. What kind of talent, you ask? Why, I once watched our very own Ray McCarthy juggle two sets of books. What kind of talent, you ask? Just yesterday, I saw our chief quality officer, Doug Salvador, practicing his magic act. He sawed himself in half and still filled out his SRS. What kind of talent, you ask? Heart and Vascular's Ari Kugelmus will demonstrate some of the skills he learned at his previous job at a big city newspaper. What department did he work in? Circulation! What kind of talent, you ask? Why, just this morning, I saw an intern find the daily entrance in his car in only 45 minutes. And speaking of talent, Bay State Franklin's Keenan Harib developed an amazing new technology, telehealth colonoscopies. When asked how the procedure went, the first patient replied, I wish I'd bought the smaller iPhone. <laughs> And as for our fearless leader, Andy Artenstein, he was gonna be here today, but he got a call from the cafeteria that they were low on PPE. So he ran out and tripled their supply of PPE in just one day. He just didn't know that PPE in the cafeteria stands for poached pickled eggs. They'll be on special all month. I'm telling you, the talent among our staff is not only amazing, it's infectious. <laughs> Bad choice of words. So sit back and enjoy the show as we demonstrate that BMP's talent goes way beyond operating rooms, doctor's offices, and nurses' stations. But first, Renee Roth is going to tell you a HIPAA joke. No. What? Uh-uh. Oh, never mind. She can't tell you. Welcome and bienvenue. Welcome. I'm cabaret, oh cabaret, to cabaret. Please welcome President of Bay State Medical Practices, Dr. Andrew Artenstein. Good evening. Welcome to the Bay State Medical Practices annual meeting. We thought that after being on the front line for the most incredibly challenging two years in recent medical history, you could all use a few laughs. Bravo to our MC. And thanks to our team members for being such good sports. Tonight, we wanted to find a way to provide some connection between members of this truly world-class team, more than 2,000 of you who make up BMP. In pre-pandemic times, the annual meeting was an opportunity to gather and get to know one another a little bit better. It occurs to me that some of you attending tonight may have never met in person or have any context about the colleagues you've been virtually working side by side with over the last two intense years. Thanks to some creative people, we think we found a way to share some personal insight this evening. However, First, our leadership team and I want to start by offering our sincere thanks to each and every one of you. Those two words, thank you, don't begin to cover the gratitude I feel for professional colleagues and personal friends who've done what this group has accomplished over the last two years. 
The pandemic has lasted so long that even heartfelt words have become diluted by their overuse. Thank you and unprecedented, while other words have exploded in meaning, pivot, resilience, at a time when it's tempting, even understandable, to want to throw your hands in the air, I hope you'll use these next 30 minutes or so to remember that in addition to your expertise, the humanity that you collectively bring to this healthcare system and the impact that you have made on our patients, their families, and each other. As uncomfortable as it may feel, allow yourself to bask in the spotlight tonight and know that you we are grateful to have you on this team. We're going to take a few minutes to provide you with brief overviews of the work we've been doing in conjunction with many of you to create the path forward into our collective bright future. Let me start by introducing the president and CEO of Bay State Health, Dr. Mark Kerouac. Thanks, Andy. It's great to be here with you tonight for what promises to be a special evening. You know that it was 10 years ago when we decided to change the tradition for the BMP annual meeting and to make the stars of the evening you, the providers of BMP. It was a lot of fun in my early years as president of the group to uncover the ingenuity and drive that so many of you showed in making care more safe, effective, and patient-centered. Going back over the stories captured in our annual reports makes me realize time and again what a special group of providers we have at Bay State. But I have to confess that the idea of showcasing the creativity of providers outside the clinical area never occurred to me. You know, I've been called a lot of things over my years in management, but life of the party was never one of them. So when I heard about the theme for this year's meeting, BMP's Got Talent, I thought it was a fantastic idea. I know what you've all been through these past few years. I've seen the struggles you've been through, the fears you've had to conquer just to be there for your patients, and the commitment you've shown to hang together as a group and as an organization. It's made such a difference in how we've been able to respond to the pandemic. I also know from our work in provider wellness that BMP providers have no problem committing to this difficult worst. What is a challenge, though, is unplugging and recharging. Throughout the pandemic, fun and relaxation has been in short supply. But things are looking up. We all know that cases are trending downward, and more and more of us are protected by some wonderful vaccines. We're cautiously moving toward the resumption of more non-COVID care with a careful eye on staffing and patient safety. You'll be hearing more about that in the coming weeks. For whatever comes next, it'll be important to find your own source of renewal. And one of the things over the years that's given me the greatest sense of energy and purpose is getting to know the people on my team better, including some of their hidden interests and talents. That's why tonight promises to be so special. So thanks for joining us, and thanks for all you've done, both for our patients and for your team members. You all should be proud of how you've endured and what you've accomplished. Now, I'd like to hand the microphone over to our Executive Vice President and Chief Operating Officer, Marion McGowan. Thank you, Mark. It's an honor to be here to celebrate Bay State Medical Practices. And it's delightful to witness how you shine, not only in your daily work, but in your many personal talents. There was little time to come up for air since the onset of the, the tidal waves of this pandemic. While looking back on the second year of this pandemic is difficult, it is necessary so we can learn from it and build our future work. I think now is the right time to share a few of my lasting impressions of the year. We are surviving this pandemic thanks in large part to your dedication to patients and to exemplary clinical leadership. A few highlights are worthy of mention to bring home my assertion. Through incident command, we were quickly able to assess the changing situation and adapt to the ever-changing presentation of the virus. BMP served as an essential leadership influence. COVID and non-COVID medical emergencies were led by Dr. Niels Rathliff and his team. I remember those delicate times that challenged our very foundation of safety in the emergency room and the essence of leadership during this crisis. I recall Drs. Elizabeth Boyle, 
Glenn Allen, Betty LaRue, and the entire ambulatory team who manage a swell of patient calls, virtual visits, COVID testing locations, and new treatment centers. There is Dr. Sarah Hessler and her infection control team who doing recognizance work on the trends, built policies, and provided valuable practice guidance to keep us safe and prepared. And Dr. Doug Salvador, Abraham Thomas, Siva Natanasabapathy, Amir Lofty, Umar Muhammad, and their teams leading the care of hospitalized patients, managing the high census demands. There is Dr. Armando Paz and the team who led our therapeutic work and the quality of care work, helping us to swiftly adjust clinical protocols to meet the clinical needs of COVID patients and reduce the incidence of mortality and morbidity. Our doctors Paul Paraglia and his team at the Family Health Centers who led pandemic care for our underserved communities. And presently, Dr. Heather Sankey is leading a team aimed at guiding us through the early recovery and our emergence work from the pandemic. You know, looking back over the year is filled with many difficult emotions and many acts of extraordinary leadership. I hope you can see that your work has prevailed through this pandemic. Although our resilience is tested justifiably, there is much hope for our future, thanks to you. We are already working on our emergence from this pandemic and looking forward to our future. We will work together to heal and recover our teams, gradually increase and prioritize the backlog of care needs of our community. We will raise our commitment to safety and excellence in the quality of our care. We'll continue our rollout of the daily management system that keeps us focused on our core, patient care. We'll apply digital technology to help us connect with patients and families and connect us across our teams to care for those who need us. We'll build our new family medicine program, grow our primary care, and also grow our service lines to meet the needs of our community. And above all, we will strengthen our commitment to invest in our people, raising the levels of staffing responsibly. When I started this role in the middle of the pandemic, I remember feedback from our leadership team and our staff. It went something like this. We need to be more agile. We need to focus on the top priorities of our core patient care services. We need to be more transparent, decisive, and communicative. Well, without a doubt in my mind, your leadership over the past year and throughout this pandemic demonstrates that we can be and we are agile, decisive, transparent, focused on our core services, and we can communicate daily and regularly to support our teams on the front line of patient care. We have demonstrated what we strived to understand and become, one Bay State. Our future is bright, thanks to you. Back to you, Andy. Thank you, Mary, and thank you, Mark, for those wonderful remarks. Well, this is everyone's favorite part of the meeting. This is the annual business meeting, which is going to be quite brief this year uh, for two reasons. In terms of um, ratifying the minutes from last year's meeting, which is uh, uh, something we normally would do, because this is a virtual event, we'll be doing that by survey uh, in the days to come. And also, the final bit of housekeeping is this year, none of the BMP board positions were due for re-election, just a lucky year. So we ask that those of you who might be interested in leadership, every other year, we typically will uh, re-elect certain positions that come up. Please consider taking a seat or seeking a seat for election on the board. Uh, there's nothing more uh, gratifying than actually being part of the way the business gets run and learning that. It's great development for burgeoning leaders. It's also very interesting and very important for our health system. That concludes our official business, including the state of the health system. And now, the, what you've all been waiting for, as the headline on the marquee promised, we bring you BMPs Got Talent. After two long pandemic winters, it seemed that we could all use a bit of pleasant distraction, something to help relieve tension and shake off the stress. 
That's where the idea for tonight's meeting started. We thought it would be fun to highlight the talent you all have, which allows you to do the incredible work you do, yet still find ways, big and small, to maintain balance in your life. Admittedly, for most of us, there hasn't been enough balance lately. However, as always, you continue to amaze me with what you managed to accomplish. So without further ado, and with willing participants from our very own team, an ensemble of colleagues star in BMP's Got Talent. Place your hand next to the wheel of our lives. Hold on tight, breaking for only what hurts you inside. I've got a wind in my back. Seth Jem is no stranger to the spotlight. You can find the musician physician on YouTube, listen to his albums on Spotify, read the Republicans' feature story in the local newspaper or track him down in the emergency department at Bay State Wing. Had to go out in the open of unknown, feeling torn. Seth isn't the only BMP member with dual identities. Prior to becoming a nurse and nurse practitioner, Paula Brooks received a Bachelor of Science degree in Animal Science. In addition to working at different veterinarians' offices, a primate center, and the Franklin Park Stone Zoo, she ran a wildlife rescue center in New Hampshire. Raising Angora goats is a new hobby for family practitioners Dr. Stephanie Silverman and Dr. Adam Garretson. Do you even have to ask why? Soft and irresistible. Jessica Skabiski, the site administrator for Bay State Health and Wellness Center in Longmeadow in Northampton, has a five-month-old Tibetan terrier named Xena. They attend dog handler classes to learn how to professionally work a show ring. Jessica says Xena fulfills her dance mom dreams. Xena doesn't care about being the best. She eats her victory ribbons. Good thing she just won another one. When it comes to trophies, we must thank Paul Gosselin's mom, who created and maintains Paul's personal Hall of Fame. A competitive athlete through high school and college, Paul just moved over to Bay State Health Finance. But he wants his BMP colleagues to know he's still always available for a pickup game of basketball or a round of golf. Bay State Noble Hospital Medical Director Britt Percy likes to hit the slopes. Of course, he's confident that the team will have his back and legs and... Hitting the stage from time to time are the docks who rock. Since the early 2000s, first as those guys over there, and since 2012 as Suit Yourself, there have been several incarnations of the group which is made up of many familiar faces. Dave Desolitz, gastroenterology, Steve Lieberman, pediatrics, Tom Haywick, husband of former BMC and now Mercy ICU doc Laurie Lucano, and Tom Higgins, who is also the band's archivist. Doctors Andy Artenstein, Jim Frank, Richard Waite, John Engelhofer, and John Romanelli have guest starred on a few occasions, and the band's provided backup for Dr. Linda Canty. A reunion is planned, but the band is searching for a new lead guitarist. Any candidates out there, we can hook you up. Anna Puskowski, a nurse practitioner at Bay State Family Medicine, Northampton, wrote this song for her daughter, 
because the virus during the COVID-19 pandemic. Because the virus, some BMP members developed new interests and discovered new talents. Courtney Hayes, a doctor at Bay State Mason Square, started quilting a couple of weeks before the pandemic shut everything down. Great timing for this sort of hobby, she points out. It can be done alone and doesn't involve a screen. She's finished seven quilts so far, a few based on artwork and others based on modern quilting patterns. She has two current works in progress, a wall hanging based on the work of Annie Albers and a self-designed Tetris quilt. Most of BH program director Jennifer Cox's quilts, she estimates she's made 40 to 50 of them, she's made as gifts for her kids. She made this one for her youngest when he was two. Another child's unicorn obsession inspired this one. And the sea creatures went to her goddaughter. Jennifer also knits lots of little sweaters that get passed along to her circle as the kiddos outgrow them. CMN Tanja Santos takes small things one step further with her knitted miniatures. The subject may vary, but Ruth Bader Ginsburg is sure to be a collector's item. Wendy Quatton not only knits, but crochets and quilts. And she's added in something for everyone's taste, baking breads and pastries that I'm sure we all wish we could sample. As an OBGYN, baking time must be tricky. Bay State Franklin Medical Center hospitalist Karen M. Scott also works with dough. To wash those goodies down, Dr. Ed Kelly, Chief of Trauma and Emergency Service BMC, has a little something special brewing. I bet his phone is already blowing up with offers to taste test his home brew. We also have a fruit farmer with a filmmaking daughter in our midst. Hi, you're going to see my precious fig tree that I've been taking care of for the last two years. Here we go. And finally, I get the most expensive fig in the United States, probably. It cost me about $120 to grow this fig. I was counting on global warming because I like to see these trees from my native country. But I don't think one and a half degrees is going to make it. I need probably like four or five degrees. Enjoy it. Physician assistant Matthew Baker likes to chill out with some soulful sounds. The chief of gastroenterology, Ira Schmelkin, liked the idea of having all-natural beef without antibiotics and hormones for his family and friends. Ira didn't grow up on a farm, but now calls 15 acres in the Berkshires home. This unlikely farmer educated himself through books and articles along with talking to other farmers. So we had to ask, where's the beef? In Richmond, Massachusetts. Another precious commodity to sweeten the pot, the chief of pediatric surgery, Kevin Moriarty, is buzzing about his honey hives. Vice President of Primary Care Elizabeth Boyle is always on the go, as Dr. Lisa Taylor Kelly from Pediatric and Newborn Medicine discovered on a kayaking outing. And OBGYN in medical informatics, Dr. Katie Barker, who hooked up with Elizabeth to learn the game of paddle tennis. Great outdoor activities during the pandemic. Nurse practitioner Maggie Platts uses a different sort of paddle trying to stay on her board. Medical Center's Neurosciences and Rehabilitation Services Director Robert Hayden has been fly fishing since he was 12. He shared his winning photo of this five pound brown trout, but won't give up his secret spot where it was snagged. Peter Vieira, chair of the anesthesiology department at BH, goes offshore to do his fishing and enjoys his time at sea. Keenan Harib dives right in when it comes to scuba diving. He also captures what he sees in his paintings and with his photography. 
Revenue Integrity Director Lydia Dollar shares Keenan's talent for photography and love for travel. Through her lens, we get to go abroad to Scotland, Austria, and Italy, or stay in the States from Hawaii to Maine. By Sealand or Air, BMP has you covered. Thoracic Surgery Chief Rose Ganim is piloting this plane, and I think recording the video at the same time. Hey, I'm Greg Campbell, uh, MedPeds Primary Care over at Brightwood, and I'd like to play a little bit from the C Major Cello Suite by Johann Sebastian Bach. Many medicine and med-ped residents contribute to the Humanities Track publications. They've published two journals as the culmination of their amazing work. The Bay State Phoenix encapsulates a year full of growth, change, and rising from the ashes. What you'll find in these journals is a culmination of sheer experiences, passion, and love for humanism in the art of medicine. We encourage you to check them out. Vice President and Medical Director of Neurosciences, Dr. Ed Feldman, and his wife's latest artistic endeavor is studying how to show images on transparent surfaces and display them in different ways to add depth and light. They use materials like gold and copper leaf on glass. They've started small, but the results are stunning. Westside internist Dr. Navatha Hanumagudi loves to paint. We love the color she adds to our world. Ronald T. Berkman, Endowed Chair of Obstetrics and Gynecology, Heather Sankey, describes the things she makes as her distractions. Heather Sagan makes wearable art. Heather is a physician assistant on the psychiatric unit at BMC, but she loves fashion for its color, texture, and uniqueness. She actually went to school for fashion design before life, as it so often does, took her in a different direction. But next, she's creating a path to becoming a fashion influencer and personal stylist, with a focus on women over 50. Maria Ortega also has a side business that's up and running. It's a family affair that this family nurse practitioner at Palmer Primary Care started with her daughter and expanded to include everyone in the house. Because as they say, a family that plays together stays together. The Ortegas utilize their arts and crafts activities to make custom engraved personal and corporate gifts. Their 12-year-old daughter is in the process of launching her own sports apparel line. It's father-son time that Andrew Healy, medical director of obstetrics, relishes. Here he seizes the day with some downtime together in Vermont. I can't stand beside you now. Not bad. Pretty impressive. <laughs> yeah. That's cool. This is where we break out the Ed Kelly beer now and toast our, uh, <laughs> toast our talents. Well. As you can see, BMP's got talent, and that's just the tip of the iceberg. I want to thank everyone for joining us this evening for what I'm sure is the shortest annual meeting on record. Uh, I'd also like to give my profound gratitude to Kathy Tobin for her wonderful and creative work on this program. She's a true professional and a great partner year over year. Thank you all for coming. See you next year. So, did I tell you? BMP's got talent. We hope you enjoyed our display of showmanship today. But if any of our acts seemed less than amazing, don't worry, Jane Albert will figure out a way to improve your experience. Welcome and bienvenue. Welcome, I'm Cabaret, oh Cabaret. To Cabot.